Hi, Assalamu Alaikum and good morning everyone. Thank you for visiting my channel again. Abdurrahim here with you. So we are continuing our aortic stenosis topic and today we are going to learn how to use a PDF probe. Some people call it pencil or pen probe. So we are going to learn how we will be using this. This probe is very easy to use but at the same time very tough to use as well if you don't know the tips and tricks to use it. Okay. I will explain you the main tricks. It's not tough. You will learn it very well. So uh, first I will explain you about the probe. This probe is mainly, you know, the probe uh, keeps two large crystal like CWO. One is continuously sending and one is continuously receiving the signals. And this probe is mainly used to acquire the higher signals, uh, higher gradient whenever you are, uh, for example, in uh, wherever you are trying to get the higher signals, but mainly in aortic stenosis patient. By the way, in the guidelines, this is also mentioned that if you are doing an AS patient, you should always try to get uh, the higher signal with the PDF probe. And any of the students who are going to submit their logbooks, you need, if you are going to do your video case on aortic stenosis, you need to get an image with the um, PDF probe just to show that how <coughs> that you know how to use the PDF probe. Okay. So let's come back to PDF probe. Uh, it is a non-imaging probe, so this is the biggest drawback of this probe because you don't know the anat anatomical orientation or the location of your signal and uh, then you need to understand the signal very well, okay? Then uh, th the advantage of this probe is that you can get very clear and very high Doppler. You just need to get more and more experienced and know about the sound of the Doppler. So you, once you will learn the sound and understand the sound of the Doppler, then you will be getting clear signals okay so mainly we are using it in aortic stenosis patient so you use it either in um, apical views like apical 3 and 5 chamber view then right parasternal or suprasternal and high left parasternal so these are the main positions where we use our pit of probe so once you are doing it in uh, apical views you need to keep your probe <coughs> in your first you need to use your imaging probe to locate where your image is okay once you locate that area and mark that area, then you use your this probe. Okay, how you are going to use it? You need to keep this probe here while the angle of your probe is going towards the right shoulder or towards your neck like here. Okay, because your flow is going to this direction. So you should be towards the angle. Your angle should be towards the flow. So that's how you are going to align your flow. Then you are going to use it in suprasternal images. You will ask the patient, you will remove the pillow and extend the neck of the patient. So you will have this suprasternal knot. So you will put it like this. So your direction should be this way, so this way. Okay. And then you will be aligned with the signal. Okay. And then the same thing, once you are doing the right parasternal images, just go into the right parasternal image. Maybe you can try it with the imaging probe first. Okay. And then you can do the, like, it will be about the third or fourth intercostal space. Try it there but don't hesitate to move slightly up or down to get a better signal okay and then you can do the same thing on your left hand side and try to uh, get the signal from there so this is all about the ped of probe uh, if you still struggle in that probe and you are not getting the higher signal uh, let me know oh by the way i forget to tell you one thing that you should know about the signal itself okay like for example you are putting the probe here and you are getting a gradient there you should know that they, this is an AS signal or this is an MR signal because the MR signal and AS signal looks like almost the same and you can easily misinterpret an MR signal to an AS signal. Okay, So you should know how which, uh, which one is an AS signal and which one is an MR signal. Always remember that the AS signal starts with the ejection time and ends with the ejection time. So it only covers the ejection period Okay, but MR signal is uh, longer in duration so it will cover IVCT isovolumic contraction time then ejection time and also IVRT isovolumic relaxation time so all these three timings will be covered in this one so MR will be larger in duration and also higher in signal as well so uh, uh, you can see this signal I'm showing it on the screen you can see this signal this is the MR signal and this is the AS signal you can see that the AS signal is uh, smaller in duration while a MR signal is higher in duration so you should know this signal if your signal starts just after the QRS like with the QRS your signal starts it means it's an MR signal if it starts after the QRS and it uh, closes up before the 
high VRT, it means it's an AS signal. Okay. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next vlog with the main parameters and the guidelines of aortic stenosis. Thank you. Bye bye.